When we talked about our sample statistics, we talked about finding the average and we talked about finding uh, variance. Well, what about when we're looking at probability distributions? Well, we wanna know the expected value. The expected value is the long run average of a particular distribution, okay? So if we look at our average here, mu, the expectation of that population average, and it comes from the fact that there is a probability of each different outcome, and it's like a weighted average. The probability of each outcome occurring times the value of the outcome, and we add them all up, we get the average, the expected value. The expected value of a random variable is the mean um, in that sample space. Okay. So we think of the mean as if we would obtain, if we were able to gain an infinite number of observations of this random variable, what would be the most common, what would be the, what would be the average, what would be the one that, uh, that typically occurs. So to think about expected value, think about the, the coin toss that we did in our previous video. So we tossed the coin and we found the probability of getting zero heads. We did eight tosses, three coin tosses in each round, eight rounds, the number of heads was zero in one of the eight rounds. So 12 and a half percent was the probability. Number of heads being one happened in three of the eight rounds. So 37.5%. And we did, we found two heads occurred three out of the eight rounds, 37 and a half percent. And the number of heads were three, all three for the three coin tosses in the round happened once out of the eight. So 12 and a half percent. So to find the expected value, what we do is we take the number of heads, so first being zero, number of heads zero, times the probability of that outcome. Remember the formula here is x times the probability of x. So x here being x equals zero, and the probability of x equals zero is the 0.125. Then we have x equals one. The probability that x equals one was three was 37 and a half percent. Then we have x equals two. The probability of x equals two was 37 and a half percent. Then the probability that x equals three was 12 and a half percent. So to find the expected value, we take x times the probability of x, and then we add them all up. So that symbol that you see here, this one right here says we're going to sum from i equals one to k. So we're gonna go through all the different k possible options, starting with uh, the first one, all the way to the end of the k different options, okay? And in this case, the expected value is 1.5. So on average, we would expect to get one and a half heads in our three coin toss. And yes, you can't get one and a half, uh, but that's telling you, you know, some of the time you're getting one head, sometimes you're getting two, and that's going to be very similar in terms of those outcomes, right? They have equal probability here. What sum would we expect to see on average if we rolled the dice? So here, this dice, this is a 36 times the dice were rolled. Uh, and so you can see those outcomes here. How would we go about finding that? we would say, okay, well, two times the probability of two plus three times the probability of three plus four times the probability of four. And we keep going all the way to 12 times the probability of 12. So we'd add all of those up to get um, our expected value. And in this case, if I run through that whole thing, I end up with an expected value of about seven. Okay. So we would expect to see a total of seven when we go to roll the two die. Now, we want to also look at variance and standard deviation. So recall that standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. We talked about in previous videos how standard deviation is a bit easier to understand. Variance, though, is more mathematically tractable. We use it in other formulas. 
And if you find one, you find the other. So we're simply looking at the spread of those values about the mean. So variance and standard deviation describe how much variability, how much dispersion there is from that mean, that measure of central tendency. In this case, we're looking at that expected value. So we have an expected value. We roll two dice. We expect to get a seven. How much does the totals run around that seven? When we toss three coins, how much does the number of heads differ, and differ from that expected value of 1.5? Okay, so how far apart are we from that expected value? To find the variance, we'll call that sigma squared. What we do is we take our value, our expected outcome, how many heads, so two heads, minus the average 1.5, we square that distance between and we then multiply it times the probability of that outcome. And we do that for all the different possible outcomes. We sum them all up. So let's see, did I put in an example one in here? Okay, let's go through this. Okay, so number of heads zero, the average was 1.5, the difference between that is negative 1.5. We square that, we multiply that times the probability of the outcome. And we repeat this process for all the different outcomes, K1 through all the different Ks, each time finding the distance between that outcome and the expected value, squaring that distance, because we're really focusing on the distance, not whether it's positive or negative, and then times the probability that it occurs, and then we sum it all up. So when you look at the formula here, Distance between the two, square them, multiply times the probability, and then add them all up when you're done. If you take the square root of that, so what we get is a variance here of 0.75. So sigma squared is 0.75, and the standard deviation then is the square root of 0.75. If we have our 36 rolls of two pairs of six-sided dice, we could find the variance. How would that work? What we would do is we would take our outcome here of two minus the expected value of seven, square it times one over 36 plus, and then we repeat this here. This is for three minus seven squared times two over 36. I can't even see that. My head is covering it up. Keep going all the way until we get 12 minus 7 squared times 1 over 36. Okay. And let's see, did I do that calculation? Let's see. That gives us a sigma squared equal to about 5.833. And then standard deviation is the square root of that, which is about 2.415 or so. Okay, so how much variability? The standard deviation tells us that the majority of the variation is within one standard deviation. Uh, and so here, expected value is seven. The majority of the numbers are gonna be within two of that in either direction. Right, so we're going to what, 4.6 up to uh, 9.4 is where the majority of the uh, results are going to be. So we'll leave this practice here uh, and uh, you're welcome to do that. So we'll put that as an assignment or uh, a practice problem within the learning management system for you.